Making our way around curve number two. And thanks very much. You too. Embarrassing. Got a camera on my head. What am I doing? Hey crew, I've got the key to that 23 Ford F-150 Raptor R. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out looks on the inside and outside. This video is gonna be a little different because I've already reviewed the 23 Raptor R. I took it off road, I drove it very fast, I jumped it. And if you wanna see that, go check out that video because this one is focused on what it's like to live with something this big, this imposing, this powerful every single day. And we'll start there with the exterior. It is eight feet wide. It is over six and a half feet tall. It makes a vicious V8 noise. This is not a truck for those that want to blend in. The big notchy projector LED headlights and LED DRLs are a wide-eyed stare down. The massive blacked out grill is a face tattoo. You just don't mess with someone with one of those. And speaking of tattoos, we do have graphics, these little eights signifying the supercharged V8 under hood. And if you're bold enough to get up close, it'll even spell that out for you. Red orange accenting around the bulging hood just to get your attention. This one is painted in antimatter blue, which looks black in shade or at night, but then the sun hits it during the day and that metallic flake sparkles out at you. Just letting you know this truck's still fun. 37 inch tires somehow look normal on a truck this large. And in case you're curious, when you do need to replace those, they're about 350 bucks a pop. So 1400 as a set, not including the full size spare tire underneath. Those are wrapped over these matte black 17 inch beadlock capable wheels. You've got these metal rhino guarded side steps, which are mostly gonna be handy just day in and day out, getting up and into the truck. And then you've got the keypad system, keeping your key locked inside the truck so you can run around keyless for activities. The profile shows off the crew max configuration, which is the only way to equip this truck along with the five and a half foot bed that has a Raptor with the red orange R on it, which does blend in. If you get a truck in the, what they call code orange color, wouldn't do that. I like the contrast. Here at the back, we've got LED taillights and turn signals. The Raptor R can tow up to 7,450 pounds. So you can pretty easily tug along your race car to the track this truck doesn't have the optional power tailgate, but it is still dampened, which is handy, with an optional spray and bed liner. As standard, you get the LED bed lighting, all those tie down points, and 400 watts of AC power for all your camping needs. There is not on this truck the bed step, which means that getting into the bed is a bit awkward. You gotta hike up your leg and then grab onto whatever you can to then get in, or you do the boot scoot, sit up here and then swing your legs over. Not that convenient. As a summary, the Raptor R is once again not for the modest, but I and probably everyone else who are even considering this truck wouldn't really care. And so here's the question for you. Is the design of the F-150 Raptor R childish or just plain awesome? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up and looking inside at this black interior with red orange accents. It's the only color option for the Raptor R with leather seat borders, perforated suede inserts, rear heated seats. You can lift up the seat bottoms for more storage options or deploy this bin for a lockable storage area. Practically speaking, I love having the seats up with this giant cabin for putting our double stroller in or boxes while moving or putting the dog bed and having him hang out back here. It's just so darn convenient. Looking at the doors, got more of that red orange contrast stitching, some fabric type material here, leather padding for your armrest, hard plastics down low, decent storage with a Bang & Olufsen sound system. To get in, we have that side step and a grab handle. And here I am behind my own seat at six feet tall with acres of legroom and giant map pockets, big foot pockets to slide my feet under so thigh support is really solid and headroom is no concern at all. Now one thing, this truck doesn't have the optional power pano sunroof, which does make it kind of dark in here and feel not quite as premium as the truck with that equipped. There is a power sliding rear glass portion. You do have armrests with leather padding and two cup holders, and you've got both USB ports, USB-A and USB-C, and an AC outlet. So you've got the conveniences and you've got the space. Let's check out the front. 
One other family focused detail to the Raptor R. Yes, you've got those side steps, but they're still very high up off the ground. So if you have smaller kids, they will likely need to be helped onto the step. And then that grab handle way up there is not going to be within reach. Now for the door closed thud. Ooh, that's very solid. Smart keyless entry is for the front two doors. The front seats look chunkier with Raptor R logos on them. They're heated and ventilated with power adjustments. The front doors look similar to the back. We've got carbon fiber trim here, just like we did in the back. Three positions of memory, two one-touch windows, power adjusting and power folding door mirrors, and another grab handle to make it easier to get in. Throwing the truck in accessory mode here. Get a little animation on the digital gauge cluster and on the infotainment screen. That gauge cluster can be customized in my view and changes with your drive mode. Leather wrapped heated steering wheel feels chunky in the hands. Large aluminum paddles look cool and are fun to use. Power tilt and telescope of the wheel is complemented by power adjusting foot pedals. Move them further away, bring them closer, just depends on your body type. Very handy for me because I've got a long torso, so I tilt up the wheel and shorter legs, so I bring the pedals closer. On the left hand side are your LED spotlights along with your bed lighting and hit this button twice to release the tailgate. Up top is the power slide of the glass and your six pre-wired auxiliary switches for all your off-road goodies and sunglass storage there. We've got storage up top. Hit this button at any time to bring up your surround view camera system. And here's a large infotainment screen. You've got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, I don't find the Sync 4 software to have the best UI, but it's not slow and it's complemented by physical controls for media and climate. Slide forward on the carbon fiber tray to find a wireless charging pad and two USB ports, 1A, 1C. To the left of the screen is your Pro Trailer Backup Assist controller to eliminate the confusion of which way to turn the wheel when backing up your trailer. Trailer brake control is here, two-speed transfer case, DC outlet and AC outlet. This is handy. You can fold down the gear selector to then unfold a work surface for typing up some emails when you're on your lunch break, I suppose. And then if you open it up, you've got a mega amount of space. I fit six big bottles. There are also two more USB ports inside. Two cup holders there. Visibility is quite good. And there's standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. Now, one of my favorite things about full-size pickup trucks are all your storage options. And I'm not just talking about the massive console. You've got cup holders everywhere, big door pockets, an upper glove box in addition to the lower one, these bins on the side of the console, so many different places to just stash your junk in addition to all the passenger volume that just allows you to sprawl out in comfort with all the amenities the Raptor R offers. Now we need to see how the Raptor R drives on the daily. All right, let's fire it up and we'll do that in a way many owners actually will with remote start. Get the heat or AC going depending on the weather, the time of year. Exhaust your garage if you have the garage door open. That's quite a thunderous idle that may disturb your neighborhood, but there is a different way of doing things. But first, hello cabin crew, thank you for joining me for this drive in the 23 F-150 Raptor R, a day in the life of this truck. And when you do hop in after remote starting, you will need to hit the start stop button. That'll send the animations doing the rest of their, their jazzy startup. Now, if you wanted to start the vehicle at a more modest level, you could go into vehicle settings, wait for the sync system to get going, go into quiet start and activate that. That'll mean that every time you start up the truck, whether it's with remote start or here in person, it will start up at this volume level. I'll show you here now. Just listen to that difference. Okay, so once again, here is normal. And here's quiet. That 
is a volume level your neighbors should not complain about. Now, before we get out onto the road, one thing I do want to address is how much space the Raptor R takes up in your driveway. So I mentioned it's eight feet wide and I have it parked here even over the limit of the concrete of curbing and just angled slightly to make it around that bush. It is backed up pretty much as far as we can go against the garage door and it sticks out to the edge and then a little bit into the street hanging over the curb. And then this vehicle that my wife is reviewing right now is also hanging over the edge with the tires. And still, this is only just enough space for my wife to get the stroller out to go take a walk with our daughters in the morning. This is something that you will have to really try to always park perfectly so that it fits all the things you'll need to in the driveway. Now, we can actually get rolling. There are, of course, several off-road drive modes to choose from, but we are not going to use any of those today. Instead, we'll be switching between normal and sport and begin this review in normal mode. Listening for the turn signal sound. That's honestly a pretty loud knocking noise. I personally would be eager to switch that off if I was sitting at a light for a long time, because this would get old. Let's do the world famous horn test next. Hmm. It's a triumphant horn. Like I've accomplished something. I have overcome getting to work eventually. Now for the turning radius test. Wheel is cranked. And this is a wide street, keep that in mind, but we still had margin on the side of us, so it doesn't appear like the 37 inch tires compromise the turning circle of the Raptor compared to the standard F-150 or any full size pickup truck. That is nice. Powertrain in the F-150 Raptor R is a 5.2 liter supercharged V8 that makes 700 horsepower and 640 pound-feet of torque. That's routed through a 10-speed automatic gearbox and sent to a part-time four-wheel drive system. Predictably, like most commuters would have this truck, we've got it set up in two-wheel drive high to save just a little bit of fuel. And 700 horsepower sounds quite intimidating, but as I'm experiencing the truck right now in normal mode, it's so docile. The throttle tip-in is progressive, it's not sharp, and getting up to speed is of course not an issue, but then maintaining that speed and not going over the speed limit isn't hard to avoid. And the 10-speed automatic gearbox is also very smooth in normal mode, just working between those gears and you not noticing anything. The suspension, this Fox Live Valve Remote Reservoir suspension, absorbs the road blemishes as if they're nothing because it's really built to handle big jumps and highly technical terrain off-road where the Raptor R absolutely thrives. I loved driving this truck in that environment in my first drive of it, which if you haven't seen, go check it out. Just to give you some context for what the Raptor R is capable of in that setting. Whereas here in this one, it's also impressing me just with how comfortable it is. The seats are plush. They've got a lot of adjustability. I can see out of it pretty easily. The only thing that is more arduous to deal with day in and day out so far is just how wide it is. So I mentioned the driveway difficulties of parking, but it's more than that because the average lane markings are 12 feet wide. And this being eight feet wide means you have just two feet of margin on either side of your tire, whereas the average vehicle is less than six feet wide. So they've got more than three feet of margin on either side. And if you're coming from one of those into this, it's going to take a little bit of attention, extra attention to your drive because you don't have that margin. So if you just look off for just a second or are distracted by something, you could find yourself floating into the other lane so much quicker than the average vehicle. And if they are not paying attention and floating into your lane or just kind of bordering the lane, you can have an oopsie. Before we continue with our simulated commute with some highway driving, I need coffee. So I'm gonna pull into this Starbucks drive-through 
and see how the Raptor R can negotiate a tight little lane. First, yeah, we'll make it under that clearance sign. That's a good start. And then, I think we're gonna make the first curve just fine. I am gonna pull up the surround view camera system just to make sure. Take this a little wider, then cut in. And, We've got it. May I please have a Grande Decaf Americano? Grande Decaf Americano. Any cream or sugar in that today? No, thank you. All right, you got it. Will that do it for you, sir? That's it. We'll see you here for 395. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I drink decaf. I uh, I can't handle the caffeine. It gets me wired. Making our way around curve number two. And there you go. thanks very much. Have a good day. You too. Embarrassing got a camera on my head what am I doing okay we made it through the drive-thru now can we make it through the drive to work that is I'm here on the highway coasting at 70 miles per hour we'll listen for the NVH level first And let's note that this is not a quiet road surface. I've been on this type of road with a variety of different vehicles and it always makes them seem louder. Here, the tire hum generated by these 37 inch all terrains, it's not egregious. There is a lot of wind noise that I'm getting right here at the seam of my door. And as you pass vehicles, you do hear those discernibly inside. Though altogether not half bad. Given the size, given the motor, given the just, I don't know, almost ominous look of the Raptor R, this isn't all that bad. And I did mention that the lane does seem narrower when you're in this ultra wide truck, but you do have assists like this lane keep assist feature, which I will show you here as I just deviate slightly in the lane it brings me back in. So if you're on the highway using this feature, even if you do get distracted momentarily, you will get corrected. And then we also have adaptive cruise control with steering assist, and I'll just let it stay in the center of the lane. If you wanna get a little closer to the vehicle in front of you, you can do that. And we're gonna have a curve here. It negotiates that very well how cool is this okay it's not hands-free but you know what if you are commuting and you're just tired at the end of your day or at the start of your day it's nice to just set this and let the truck do part of the driving for you and let's not forget what we're driving here if you do need to make a passing maneuver you can hit that R button twice activate those settings and just put your foot down <laughs> Well, you made it through the slog and traffic to work and oh, someone else has a Raptor. Very nice, but it's not the R, so you win. And now you have to park it. So we're gonna do our very best here to do it in a single pass. And of course, we are going to back it in. Lead it over, check the backup camera and do the rest with your line of sight. and complete the job in one go. Shocking. And here's how that looks from the outside. Got it between the lane markings. Of course, this would be harder if I had cars on both sides of me or if this was a narrower alley, but you can do it. You can park your Raptor R at work and not disturb anyone, at least until you want to. And by that, I mean, let's say you take the lunch break and you wanna show off to the guys from work well, you've been smart and customized the quiet mode setting to only be from between 11 p.m. to 8 a.m. Not to disturb your neighbors, but meaning you can do this. And have it sound great. And for everyone to go, ooh, nice V8. The work day is finally over. Now you do have some errands to run, but maybe on your way to those errands, you wanna see just how quick your Raptor are 
will get to 60 miles per hour and you happened to have brought along your race box to see in a real world context how you do. To get the Raptor R ready for its jump to 60, there is no launch control. I'm just gonna put it in four wheel drive high and change the drive mode to sport. From here, I'm not gonna brake boost it because from experience that doesn't really work in this truck. I'm just gonna put my foot down and see how we do. <laughs> 3.92 seconds to 60. That is obscene and uh, is sure to perk up your work week. <laughs> Come on. Now the only problem with shenanigans like that is that if you do them too often, you will need to be seeing the fuel station on the regular because while this is a 36 gallon tank, we've been averaging 10.4 miles per gallon from over eight hours of seat time. That means less than 400 miles on a single tank. And you know, the EPA rates this truck at 10 in the city, 15 on the highway and 12 combined. If you did average 12, you'd get over 400 miles on the tank. But every time you are filling up 36 gallons at, uh, what is it? About $6 a gallon for premium is gonna be over $215 per fill up. That's, that's rough. You got your fuel, you got your groceries and you decided to park a little far away from everyone else because at least with these lane markings your tires are touching on both sides so this is just the prudent choice at least we should have space inside to accommodate these hmm just be safe i'll lift up the seat bottoms oh thank goodness we nailed it so what's it like to live with an f-150 raptor r I'll start with the good stuff. This truck is exceedingly spacious and practical. It's comfortable at these heated and ventilated chairs up front, the heated seats in the rear. It's got great features, both in the infotainment system, gauge cluster, and for your driving assistance technologies. And it's got hilarious power that you can tap into whenever you want, but won't overwhelm you when you're daily driving it. It also has superb ride compliance, better than any full-size pickup truck I can think of. This Fox suspension is doing double duty here, being so pleasant on road, and then you take it off-road and it can just handle the punishment of that. There are some nuisances though. First off, it's expensive. It's $109,000 expensive. And this one with the spray and bed liner is about 110 grand. And the way I'd equip this truck with the two sunroofs and the power tailgate would be about 112,000 bucks. It also guzzles gas, so it's expensive at the pump as well. And it's 36 gallon tank means that you're not filling up all the time, but when you do, it's so pricey. And then it's just dimensionally daunting for a lot of people. It's so wide that it requires that extra effort to park it just wherever you go, including at home in your own driveway. And then driving it requires that extra attention to keep it within the lane. But for me, I would absolutely drive this thing every single day. I would overlook those inconveniences for all that you gain with this truck. And now I'll throw the question to you. Would you put up with those minor inconveniences to daily drive something that is just this freaking cool? Or would you save some money and either get the narrower bodied and therefore easy to live with every day Chevy Silverado ZR2 or the equally bold and brash and still less expensive Ram TRX? Let me know in the comments and I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and I will see you again next time.